not allow a 28 year old unit destroy a 90 year old establishment and a good how you know a good leadership is that the voice of the people is stronger than the voice of the leader any nation where the voice of the leader is stronger than the voice of the people is a banana republic when the people say end this end this end this to tell them that you are accountable to them you end it you don't say you have spent so much to you know set up an organization so because of the investment you cannot end it you don't refurbish a bad investment if you got married to somebody and on the night of your wedding you discover that what you thought was a wife is a man will you go ahead with the marriage you cancel the marriage so you end it and those people who are protesting and taking advantage looting destroying stores they are worse than what they are protesting against you don't take advantage of protest to, or your jacket to start a movement or something when it comes to life everybody is a stakeholder when it comes to killing somebody taking life that is why you see the whole place it's not about fear of pride it's not about electricity tariff it's about life it's about life are you listening so we are all calling the government that say listening to the voice of the people the whole world is watching to see if the leadership will listen to the people so on behalf of all of those who have died we are going to observe a moment of silence young people young boys innocently killed may their souls rest in peace clap your hands and take your seat the church has to speak when there are issues that's one of the things I will not stop doing amen your amen is not correct amen okay this morning is for someone first samuel chapter 16 verse 11 to 13 akaka budu budu zakati gotegede first samuel chapter 16 11 to 13 and samuel said unto jesse i hear all thy children and he said there remaineth yet the youngest and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy. Ruddy. Withal of a beautiful countenance. And goodly to look to. Someone was ruddy at the same time, goodly. <laughs> and the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. From that day forward, so Samuel rose up and went to Ramah, remembered for honor. Remembered for honor. Remembered for honor. Remembered for honor. One of the most, listen to me very carefully, I'll, I'll be brief. One of the most terrible things. A terrible thing that can happen to any mortal man is for you to be absent on the day of your glory. To be absent on the day of glory is a tragic experience. That the day that David was to be honored, the day David was to be to be favored, the day David was to be elevated, that was the day David was not at home. The day that a prophet came for him, the day a prophet came to single him out, the day a prophet.
prophet came to pick him out in his family to make him a voice and an eternal excellency the day he was to be humbled and elevated was the day he was manipulated and i make a decree anything that manipulates you manipulates your emotion manipulates your thought manipulates your action and takes you out of the place of your lifting manipulates your life to take you out of the place of remembrance what manipulated david to the bush the very day his honor was to be released there are so many of us there is honor kept there is lifting kept but something keeps manipulating you on the very day of your lifting today that power is broken take your seat god is a god of remembrance genesis 8 verse 1 said god remembered noah god remembered noah and every living thing that was in the ark he said god of remembrance jeremiah 15 15 Rem he said oh lord thou knowest remember me and visit me in genesis chapter 30 i believe verse 22 he said and god remembered rachel and opened her womb opened her womb the bible says in psalm 132 verse 1 and god remembered david and all his afflictions god is a god of remembrance when god remembers you he elevates you numbers 22 17 the bible says that to remember to, to to remember you unto great honor to promote you to great honor and to remember you what does it mean to be remembered what does it mean for an individual an entity a personality to be remembered to be remembered is to to be suddenly looked upon to be remembered in other words uh, the, to be remembered is to be suddenly looked upon suddenly you catch the attention of the desired helper suddenly you catch the attention of the person who is in a vantage position for your elevation suddenly you catch the attention you have been there all along you have been around all along but suddenly you catch the attention to be suddenly looked upon what does it mean to be remembered to be remembered means to be illuminated to be illuminated in other words when light suddenly shines upon a person when the person suddenly becomes bright and notice you say such a person i be remembered there are so many people who appear forgotten because there is a cloak of darkness that seems to have covered them there is a cloak of darkness that seems to have overwhelmed them but when illumination suddenly comes and light suddenly comes and the force of brightness suddenly comes and all of a sudden attention is released in your direction you say you have been suddenly remembered am i talking to somebody what does it mean to be remembered to be remembered means to be rewarded you are putting effort you are putting labor nothing is happening it appears you are suddenly going comatose but when you are remembered reward comes when a man is rewarded the man has suddenly be remembered i speak to the elements of nature i speak into the realms of the spirit i speak into your background and i speak into your future i project myself in the spirit and i decree you shall be rewarded all your labor in the lord all your effort with god all your service to god all your fasting and prayer all your sacrificial seed all the giving you have given all the effort in your work with god you shall be rewarded you shall be remembered if your amen is louder you are the one i'm talking to it mean to be remembered to be remembered is to be publicly commended to be publicly commended when a person is remembered it means the person is publicly commended he, he, he is publicly publicly commended it's not done in the private in other words nobody can despise it all eyes will see it all ears will hear it all mouths will testify of it to be publicly commended where an assertion for positivity is placed on you to be publicly commended to be publicly spoken in favor of to be publicly spoken for 
Am I speaking here? He said, Behold, our sister and our sister has grown up with no breast. What shall it be done? How shall it be said in the day when she shall be spoken for? In other words, when you are not being spoken for and not spoken of, it means you have been forgotten. When you are remembered, you are publicly commended. You are publicly spoken for. Am I talking to somebody right now? That is what it takes to be what? Remembered. That's what it takes to be remembered. Many of us, do you know that as soon as Esau was, Jacob rather, was stepping out, that is when Esau was stepping in. Absent on the day of your honor. One time in Second Samuel chapter 9, the Bible says a man called David said, Is there anyone in the house of Saul that I might show kindness in, in the life of, of David? Jonathan played a major role for his elevation. Is there anyone in the house of Saul that I will show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And Ziba spoke. Many people think Ziba was a helper. Ziba was was not a helper. Ziba was the third voice. Ziba said, Jonathan has a son, but he is lame. Why? There were three categories of people that will not stand before the king. If you are blind, if you are lame, if you are a leper. In other words, he has a son, but sorry, sir, there is nothing you can do about the son because the son is not supposed to appear before the king. Am I speaking here? When Saul that was alive, Ziba was like the personal assistant to Saul, not just a mighty man, he was close to Saul. When Saul died, because Saul has a son called Jonathan that died with the father, the grandson of Saul, while the, 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 he was, it was five years old, five years old five years old not five months not five weeks not five days when the nurse taking care of him heard that the father died and the grandfather died she was running with the boy and the boy fell and became paralyzed hey ladies and gentlemen something is wrong a five years old boy cannot fall from the hand of a person and become paralyzed a five years old boy cannot fall from the hand of a nurse and become paralyzed he can injure his leg he can bruise his leg but it cannot fall from your hand. It didn't fall from a story building. It didn't fall from a skyscraper. It just fell from somebody's hand. From the hand of a nurse, a female nurse. And it became paralyzed. Something tells me that nurse did something strange. That nurse was on an, on an assignment. So how can in one day, fa grandfather died, father died, son became paralyzed. There are some things you think are ordinary. You think they are coincidental. They are not coincidental. Incidental. There is a satanic agenda that has tailored them to happen that way. Grandfather died, father died, son became paralyzed. It was not ordinary. I come to declare anything manipulating your life. I like the rod of Moses rose up to swallow the rod of magician. I rise, I rise, I swallow them up. I rise, I swallow them up. I rise. I swallow them up. If your amen is louder, tell the blessing. Ziba said, Saul, Yalamo Shakadaba. Saul has a son. But not only is he lame, he's in low deba. There are areas where nobody penetrates the king's territory if you come from there. Lodiba was a place that was cursed. Lodiba was a place that had low pasture. Lodiba was a place for the relegated. Lodiba was the place for the abandoned. And King David said, for the first time, uh, I will break protocol. Go and bring him. Go and bring him. But what am I saying? David felt like honoring somebody, but no one who qualified or desired or deserved it was available so that is where i want to pray before i continue when when your day of glory has been programmed nothing will manipulate you out of it 
Can I say something to you? There are some feelings that are emotional that are manipulations. There are some things you say that are manipulations. They are not normal. The devil takes over your emotion. I have been in the deliverance ministry for over 25 years actively. And I can tell you when people are under manipulation, one of the signs when people are under manipulation is that they, they refuse to believe they are under manipulation. A manipulated person will tell you, I know what I am doing. When the devil wants to manipulate you, he gives you reasons. He gives you points. People that left marriages, you think they just left? Satan shows them points. See this, see this, see this, see this. Am I communicating now? And, 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 and many of on their day of honor, they were manipulated out. Am, am I talking to somebody? Did you know when Saul was to be anointed as a king, he was hiding behind the bag of sack? Saul was hiding behind. It was the people around him that pushed him out. When you are under manipulation, one of the cure is to have good people around you. When the people around you are in support of your emotional manipulation, you end up in pain. When a woman feels angry with the husband, I want to leave the house, and she has friends who tell her what is wrong with you. You want to leave what? Why are you leaving that man? If that man is so bad, what about the good part of it? If that man you feel so bad, what about the things he has done right? But when she is surrounded with people who tell her, leave, leave, leave. You know, people make mistakes. There is something they don't understand understand about the future i spoke to a young pastor this morning who was having a problem with his overseer and i said as a young man the future is not far the future is close 10 years is like tomorrow do you know 15 years is like yesterday you are making mistakes now not knowing that the future is close you think you think 10 years is far away and any step you take now can affect it. Omega started to me, it's like yesterday. It's like yesterday. Time flies. I, I, am, I, am I communicating right now? Am I talking to you now? I know what I'm telling you. I've seen people with... Mama and I, we are talking. There are people that quote scriptures. They pray. They fast. Yet they are highly manipulated. One of the signs of manipulation, manipulation is entitlement mentality. I deserve more than this. Once you say you deserve more than this, you will lose what you got by privilege. Take your seat, let me preach to you. A lady said to me, I am divorcing my husband. I said, why? He said, my husband, you know, he brought me to America. He has not been showing me care. He's doing two jobs. He lasts early at the first time for me. Blah, 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 blah. He doesn't show me concern. And I asked him on the phone. I said, how long was he in America? He said, he was there for eight years. I said, before he carried you over? He said, yes. I said, woman, how old are you? She said, she's 39. I said, I'm way older than you, so I can insult you. If you are older than me, I can insult you. But you are just 39 you are a small girl so i can insult you i say write this down she said yes sir hold on let me get a paper she wrote it i say write it i am a fool he said i don't understand i say write it she wrote it i say write this down i am stupid she said i don't understand write it i say i say read it to yourself she said i don't say read it she read it i am a fool i am stupid i said let me advise you a man was in america for eight years and still remember to come and collect you i know men went to america for eight days and as soon as they entered America, their marriage was over. A man was in America for eight years and he still saw opportunities. He saw opportunities to have a white wife for documentation, to marry for paper. Yet he said, No, he picked you and 
prayed you to come and stay with him and you are focusing on the little errors he made i said say that thing again i am a fool he said i'm a fool say i am stupid he said i'm stupid i said a man showed you so much love and he got that money he's struggling to pay for an apartment yet for six times he were rejected visa yet he kept sending you money for visa and he bought tickets yet he's struggling to pay for rent but i'm reading that in again what is it he said i am a fool i am stupid I, when i finish with her he says sir it's okay i says no okay it's not okay because you are under manipulation i want to talk to you until your senses will come back when i was done she broke down in tears Am, am, I, am, I, am I talking to somebody? And he said, he, he said, he was suddenly remembered for honor. How many of you are expecting honor? Sir, honor, honor is sweet. Honor is sweet. Honor is sweet. Honor shall reflect in your life. What is honor? What is honor? What is honor? Honor is respect. Honor is outstanding dignity. Honor is premium. When you are placed at the level of excellence, when you are, you are picked out of the crowd and, de and strategically designed and positioned and sent to a generation, honor is about to show up in somebody's life. Honor is about to show up in somebody's life. One of the strengths of the prophet Samuel, Samuel was a prophet of God. The Bible says concerning Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 9, I think verse 6, he was an honorable man. The Bible says concerning Jabez, in 1 Chronicles 4 verse 9, he said Jabez was more honorable. Honorable. One of the problems that Naaman had in 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 1, the Bible said Naaman was the captain of the host of Syria. He was an honorable man. Somebody under the sound of my voice, honor is coming to your life. In Psalm 91 verse 15, God said, I will deliver him and I will honor him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. I make a decree to the first 2,000 people that Jehovah is about to honor you. Take your seat. In Psalm 49 verse 12, he says, A man that is in honor and abideth not. A man that is in honor and knoweth not. It's like the beast that perish. Samuel came to the house of Jesse looking for a king. God is on a search. God is on a search. God is searching. God is searching. God is on a search. And there are certain qualities that God is looking for. It's the quality that qualifies you. And until those qualities are found, you can be picked out. How many of you know that no matter how desperate you are for workers, you can't pick unqualified workers? No matter how desperate God is, no matter how desperate God is for vessels, he can't pick unprepared vessels. Not many mighty men are picked. Do you know Samuel came alone all the only notice he gave them was that I'm coming he said I'm coming that's all he said what are the criteria? not told what are the qualities not told <laughs> you know why you can't lobby divine selection you can't lobby divine selection when you look at divine selection you cannot lobby do you know we live in a generation of lobby everybody lobbies for something everybody lobby for something even those that sit in the lobby lobby life and 
destiny, life, and married life and business. Even in many churches, elevation and promotion is by who you know. Minus this church, because I'm not a normal person. I can just pick one guy from a corner and just send him to America. You can't question me. It's not possible. In the constitution, everything ends at my table. I report to God. It's like the Supreme Court. When the Supreme Court decides the case, if you don't like it, go to God. So I've done some crazy things that people are wondering. When I see certain qualities, I, I project a future. When I also see certain qualities, I know this future is at risk. You don't lobby divine select. That is why Esther was picked. Esther was not qualified because before the king picked women, he told them, he said, take this. He gave to one of the chamberlains. He said, I need to pick a new wife. He said, but I'm going to give you requirements. In other words, beautification materials to beautify their external features. I will give you hair, nails, eye extension, cream, all of that so that you can beautify them so that when they appear before me they sound presentable palatable appreciable physically and the bible says esther required nothing so if you are to go by the physical attitude of esther she was not close to being a queen but when grace is around protocols are broken do you know if you read verse 5 of that of that chapter i'm just laying a framework if you read verse 5 of that chapter, chapter, chapter 16, the Bible says, as Samuel was coming, every son of Jesse were all sanctified. Because before you can be picked out to ascend that throne, there must have been a physical sanctification and preparation. Now, David was not among the sons at home that was sanctified, yet he was picked as king. What happened to the procedure? When God elevates a man, you may not understand, but don't condemn. You may not understand. How do you understand a girl who was almost a prostitute last year? Now she enters into the church and she becomes the one taking solo. And her voice is so outstanding. And the anointing of God is heavily upon her. When God lifts a person, you may not understand, but don't criticize. How do you see a brother who was a criminal as it were? Now he carries the Bible and he preaches the word of God. When God lifts up somebody, you may not understand don't criticize how do you explain a Johnson who come from a Muslim family an Islamic background who was a terror who was, the, who was in primary five and he had started smoking and he was a terror and a fighter am I speaking here at the age of 14 I've gotten a black belt from martial arts I was going about fighting people today he's holding a microphone and he's preaching the gospel meanwhile there is a young boy who has been decent since he was born and now he is still struggling on how to serve God. I don't understand when God lifts up a person. You may not understand. Don't criticize. How do you explain a brother who does a minor job and grace came upon him in less than six months? He has gotten acceleration. He has gotten accentuation. He has gotten expansion. You don't understand. Don't. The way the workings of God are. He said, I am the Lord, I do as I please. I am the Lord, I do what? There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. When God lifts up a person, there's nothing you can do. All the other sons, listen to me, all of you are arrogant. Do you know all the other sons of J Jesse, we are all prepared? They were prepared, but yet they were disqualified. There are many of you today who are experiencing some level of lifting by God. Others were prepared for what you have now, but yet they didn't have it. Grace found you. Others were prepared. Others were prepared, but grace found you. You think it's because of your power of diction, your oratory of public speaking? You think it's because of your mastery of grammar? You think it's because of your verbal and vocal prowess? 
there are people that are more eloquent their linguistic is impeccable their lingo is outstanding i mean their grammar is heavy and outlandish but yet nobody gave them access for grace picture grace found you grace announced you you have children today there are people that you some of you are looking at me i had children now some of you women but you did several abortions in the past yet you have two children three and you are complaining and there is somebody who has been decent yet no child grace found you grace found you and sometimes that's that's why i say to myself at, at times sometimes i just sit down just cry i shed tears i ask them i tell my wife i say who am i who am i who am i that God just decides to favor me. It keeps me perpetually humble. That even in the days of shaking, I am not bothered. It's only a fool that forget the past. The past faithfulness of God, the past liftings of God, because of your today, I, I am, I am, I say, who am I? Sometimes when people talk about me, I, I, I think they are talking about somebody here because I do not deserve the kind of things they are saying. I've seen people that stayed on the mountain for three years. Do you want it means to fast on the mountain? You've been to the mountain with me several times. Are you okay? Some are there for years. They live there. They live there. January 1st to December 31st. January 1st, December, four years fasting. They came back. Nothing is working. I'm going to explain why someday. But that one, that's part of the things we are going to be dealing with in our minister's conference. <clears throat> and God has blessed you. And they were prepared. Do you know the worst? Do you know the worst thing that can happen to anybody? I just imagine the eye of Shammah.